Hello, this is Simon and this is Mayor 0.58. I'm going to start a custom mission and I'm going to set a ample map size, set a megathermal climate and turn down tectonic activity. Right, I'm going to pick colonists who have a good mix of skills. Leadership will be useful. Uh, energy research. And I'll pick this guy and I'll pick this colonist. If you get a choice to pick medicine or any sort of medical skill, always pick that as it's quite a useful skill. I'm going to now build a workshop and get this base started. So first of all, double click to fill the room. Place a workshop table. I don't want it too close to the walls because I want to place some things against the walls. It's going to place a microwave smelter so we can smelt uh, minerals into building materials. And then I'm going to place a nano printer so we can get more imp robots. So talking of imp robots, I've rewritten a big chunk of the imp AI today and I'm going to give him a big digging task over here so we can dig out a new room. And I'm going to create like a doorway here. I'm actually going to close this off so if we have a cave in we don't have a drastic event. So they've finished that room now so we need to get power supply up and running. Uh, there's not too much going on outside so I'm going to place a wind turbine. So this is a colonist request. So this is one of the emergent things that can happen. Um, the colonists are able to now identify problems with the base and make suggestions and request uh, you to allow them to do things. So this guy's requesting that he set plants outside for destruction. So we've just set 12 plants outside for destruction to clear the entrance of the base and stop this plants damaging your equipment or attracting animals. So someone's already started the smelter up. The colonists are a lot better at starting things. I'm going to start the nanoscale printer because that's one thing they can't do on their own. And that will give us a new imp. So we're receiving some emails. And a progress report asking for an atmosphere generator. So we need to get some atmosphere in the base quickly. And an empty power report because we don't have any power generation yet. And the one we just received about the plants. You notice the colonists have uh, fixed info tips and so does the imp robot. Which is much more useful for seeing uh, what jobs the imp are getting up to. So we need to place that atmosphere generator. So this room won't get too cold or run out of atmosphere. I'm going to place another room, which will be my hydroponics. I'm going to place a door. And maybe a door, maybe not. I'll wait till they finish the room. So on this wall, I'm going to place a condenser unit, which is one of the newer items in the game. It certainly hasn't been in any of the videos yet. It allows colonists uh, to drink water, and it also collects water from the atmosphere. I'm going to place a space heater on the wall as well. Just checking that it's not actually stuck there. Right, so the colonists have gone outside and they've started building that already. The colonists uh, are much smarter about going outside from the airlocks now because the game now supports multiple airlocks and multiple bases. I'm going to play some solar arrays to augment our power a little bit. And I'm going to call in a new capsule so we can get some more colonists. That's landed conveniently close to the base. Slightly inconveniently close to that solar panel. So the colonists are getting on with building things in the base, and we're getting more emails. So they're complaining about a lack of beds, and they're upset. And we have a meteor event warning, uh, which means a meteor is likely to impact us soon. And it will disrupt outside activities. Oh, there we go, that was the impact. We probably don't need to uh, have all these plants out here disassembled. They're not that close to the airlock. So we'll just cancel them so we're not wasting our imps' time.
We can also disassemble that lander, which will give us more building materials. So one of the new changes also is the base manifest. It now holds a lot more information. You'll notice things like the colonists uh, show their targets, so that's where they're going to and what they want to use. Uh, so a lot of people going to the smelters or the workshop table, or you can see someone there is going to go build that condenser unit. And as you can see, he's down there building it. We can uh, read our power systems reports. And more people complaining about beds. So the condenser unit slowly draws humidity out of the air and then turns that into liquid water. Um, of course, your colonists can still use the water barrels. You can still play music on them. And you can still place the solar still outside. So you can collect more water that way. Obviously, the solar still outside doesn't require electricity. So the hydroponics have changed a bit. Plants are now susceptible to blight, which means if they're in a very warm room and they're left unharvested, uh, they can go mouldy and that can spread to other plants and that can cause your entire crop to fail. Obviously the blight is plant specific, so if you plant a, a mix of different types of plants, uh, you're less likely to have that blight spread. So I'm planting each one of uh, the root vegetables, so carrots uh, and some broccoli and some kale and things, some potatoes. So we have a mix there and if one of the crops fails we'll have the other ones. So here's another one of those uh, requests. A colonist has noticed that uh, there might be an earthquake and he wanted to cancel the importers. I don't want him to do that because I actually want to give the imps more orders. Although we, we do run a risk of that room now collapsing in. So our power's gone out, which I believe is probably to do with this solar event warning. So those will take out our power grid. And we can, in later game, research things to stop our power grid getting so affected. Um, and now if you mouse over things, you can see that our communications outside are being disrupted. And our electricity inside the base is gone. Although oh, that's now gone off. So the temperature in our base is roughly okay. Call us having a hug. We now want to think about this room. So we need a living area because although we're growing food, we now need to process it. And that guy's complaining about beds, which we can also build in the living area. So we'll place some beds and then we'll place some food preparation stations, which uh, turn raw food into edible food. Raw food can actually still be eaten by the colonists, but it causes them to get sick and then gives them gastric distress. So you see these lights are flickering because we're low on power, so I'm gonna turn the space heater off because these lights will actually generate heat anyway, um, and we can turn that heater back on when we've got more power set up. So I'm just checking the uh, different places in my base. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this uh, or dig this bit of rock out and then I'm going to place an air vent system. And I'm going to use that to push air uh, out of the hydroponics bay and, and pump it through, through the base. Uh, because of course the hydroponics generates a small amount of atmosphere from the plants, although these plant pots won't be generating much. Low temperature warning in living area. So wind turbine has a reasonably good output. Of course our portable solar arrays only work when it's sunny and the snow and other weather effects can reduce their efficiency. So what we want to do is we want to place a flywheel energy storage so we can maximize our power grid's potential. Of course, um, that will charge up. And I'm going to just prioritize this door. 
And as you can see, someone's built that air vent system. And the dog and the cat are about. The cat and dog AI are coming soon. Obviously, they haven't been prioritized because it's not the most critical gameplay feature. I've just seen the colonists um, dealing with the plants and harvesting them, so I'm going to play some food preparation systems so they can take those raw products and place them in that. As you can see, the colonists, when they have enough materials and minerals to work with, uh, can build quite quickly now, and they're quite efficient. So we've got a, a decent amount of generation. Colonists complaining about building materials and sex and repairs. As we can see, uh, Living area. we've got a reasonable amount of building materials left, just but uh, not enough to get all the objects in the base built. So I'm going to place a space heater in here to warm the room up. You don't need an atmosphere generator in every room. I'm going to place an emergency air system in this room though. So the emergency air system allows you to uh, quickly refill a room with air. In an emergency. Both our smarters are in constant use. The colonists are much smarter about using the smarters now, although there is still the risk of um, them setting fire if the colonists use them incorrectly. I'm going to set some of these plants for destruction because these trees are getting quite large. And it may be easier if I just uh, possess the imp and go and destroy them myself. So now I want to go dig over here. Why do I want to do this? Because the game now supports multiple airlocks well, and we should have a different entrance to our base in case one gets blocked or attacked. Oh, and we have a colonist request pop up as soon as we came out of this. So they want to give the bots sentience chips. Uh, I'm going to say no to that, uh, because I want to uh, demo the game to you and not have something terrible happen. So we'll dig out here, Low temperature warning. and through here, and then we'll place an airlock on the Living other side. Area. So we're now storing enough energy, and our emergency air system has been built. So I can now click on that to uh, release air. I'm not going to do so, it has to fill up. So it floods a room with nitrogen and a very small amount of oxygen. Obviously, um, the reason why rooms become toxic in my is because they're filling up with CO2. So someone's out of breath and their chest hurts, um, but that's not to do with the atmosphere, that's probably to do with them being sick, so we need to build a medical room soon. However, no one's limping around the base or showing any visual signs of being ill, so I can put that off for a little longer. I can build an airlock here. And I will do, although not right now, uh, because I don't want the colonists uh, coming out that airlock to do it. I want them to go around through the dugout area. So that was the sound of the smelter starting up. I don't know why it was suddenly so loud. And as you can see, all our plants are growing quite well. I'm going to place another plant pot here because four plants is not enough for about ten people. And you can see our ration packs are running down quickly too. So I'm going to place another ration pack and the colonists will prepare that from the food from the hydroponics. Of course I still need to build a livestock containment for the chickens. But I still need to get around to that. So that person's building the food preparation station. So I can see over there that a colonist is repairing uh, the flywheel, and she was doing it by hand. The colonists don't need to be doing that, so we can build some 
repair robots. I'll just place one for the moment. Our food preparation station is ready, however it's not got any food in it yet. And our new colonists have arrived. And the colonists are very responsive, so you can see she's already started building that repair robot. So as, as that's built, I can then uh, take control of that. And okay, so there's a fire. Um, so I was gonna possess the robot and I don't want the robot going near the fire and spreading it either. So I'm just gonna move him away. Um, yeah, the, the colonists uh, will deal with the fire. I could close the doors and choke the fire out, however. Um, someone will run to the airlock soon. Why are they having a hug? In Obviously, they feel bad about the fire happening. So, the colonists will suit up. And one of them will go uh, fight the fire. There is a risk of it spreading there, but the colonists uh, don't care too much about that at the moment. And the fire's almost dead. But yeah, it's gone out by the time they even got there anyway. But they'll make sure it doesn't reignite. Because of course, uh, fires, if the atmosphere levels increase, can uh, reignite and auto-ignite if there's enough oxygen. Just gonna drive past the cats and everyone. We go outside and fix the wind turbine, because that's our main source of power. And now I can just weld it fixed. And it'll be up back up to full efficiency. So our atmosphere's low. Not in the storage though, I think. Oh, in the in the storage, not in the workshop. Um, otherwise these rooms are all okay. The food preparation station has food, but it doesn't have electricity, so it can't process it. We can turn off our space heaters. Although that one's already off. So I should call a team meeting. It will be great for morale and organization and certainly not a waste of our precious time. Certainly. So that person was a team leader, so that means they uh, can boost morale on things, so they're going to run off to have a meeting if the preparation station's working. So they will go to an area and they'll wait. And obviously, because this is the future, they have no concept of uh, personal space. I only really ever wrote that system for a few of them to have a meeting at a time, not ten people, but never mind. But yeah, it's it's really nice to have these little emergent behaviors and colonists that are aware of their surroundings and can organize things. So I'm going to set this uh, air vent system to blow air out the room and not mix it. And hopefully that will improve the atmosphere in the workshop. So we have alarms everywhere. I'm not too worried about them. And our food's prepared. So we have these rooms now dug out, and someone's already built the airlock, which I didn't even notice. So I'm going to fill this with a, a research area, probably. But first I want a, a medical, because I've noticed more and more people complaining about being sick. So I'm going to play, double click and just place a medical, although I've now realized that's far too small because I need a scanner and medical beds and other things. So we need the imps to dig that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that imp run through that door. And then I'm gonna lock lock it behind there, so those imps will be stuck there digging out, because we're losing atmosphere from that area, and the atmosphere generator isn't enough. So I'm gonna turn that space heater back on that I turned off to save electricity. So yeah, people complaining about having sharp pains and other things. People feeling out of breath. There's all signs of illness. Oh, we've got enough electricity. Oh, and people are sending uh, slightly insane haikus to me, which is a, always a good sign. One of the things we haven't seen is the new uh, creature migrations in this game. Creatures uh, migrate around the, the map now, and you get warnings via email. 
talking about being around that, I'm going to place a geothermal generator uh, on one of those blue vents because that will get us. So, okay, so we have we have a fire again. I like the fact that this time the smelter has continued to work while being on fire. That's that's some great design. Hopefully this time they'll put it out before it eats all the atmosphere. So there's about a 5% chance of that happening when colonists use it in that specific context. So the chance of a fire happening is actually tiny. So I'm going to place this uh, medical room and I'm going to place... Uh, equipment. Oh, and we've got a bit of a cave-in happening. So medical... Oh. It's only a, only a minor cave-in there. But yeah, so this is uh, Maya 0.58. I'm going to stop here because I realised I've been talking for about 20 minutes straight. Um, everyone should check out the game. I hope you enjoy this update and report all the bugs you get. And I'll be diligently fixing them. Thank you for supporting the game. I will be back in a month. I'll see you then.